I am woman enough to admit that I was wrong. I am woman enough to admit that I was wrong. Hey y'all, it's Sheree, what's up? Back with another video. Today we'll be doing a major hair update since I cut my natural hair. If you can't tell, yes, I cut my natural hair. I cut a lot of inches. I said four in my original video, but y'all, it's more than four. <laughs> it's a lot. I don't know exactly how much I cut, but this cut has taken me back to almost my big chop length, give or take a few months, and we'll talk about that a bit later. We're gonna talk about this cut, <laughs> why I had to cut my natural hair, why I had to cut my long natural hair, the things that kind of led up to it, the reasons behind it, what I kind of went wrong on my natural hair journey that got me here. We're gonna talk about it all in this video, so that's something that you want to learn more about definitely stay tuned if you haven't seen my video on my cut you can definitely check it out right here of course if you are new here and you've never seen my face or my hair and you like my face and my hair definitely be sure to subscribe I will love it if you stuck around and I would also love it if you gave this video a thumbs up give the video a thumbs up hit the like button that also goes such a long way. And if you haven't joined my exclusive community, The Insider Tea, where I talk about all things natural hair, fashion, skincare, all of that, you may want to join. That is where I will be tracking my progress every single week. I just can't come on and do a formal video on YouTube. If you want to track the progress of me growing my hair back out, join The Insider Tea. It will be linked down below. But enough long talking. Let's pull up my notes and let's get into it. Y'all see this? My hair used to be down here. Like, maybe in some sections it was only four inches, but in some other sections it was a lot. It was definitely a lot. Like I said, I'm back to my big chop length, give or take a few months, maybe like six months after my big chop. That's the length that I have, especially the bottom section, my hair was much shorter here. Um, she did a blunt cut on straightened hair, but of course with shrinkage and stuff like that, my hair is longer at the top and shorter at the bottom, just based on how my hair shrinks. And <laughs> it sucks. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it doesn't suck, that it's not a setback. I know y'all don't think it's a setback because you don't think it's a lot of hair. And it's not like I'm saying that hair didn't need to be cut. That hair definitely did need to be cut. I probably had some of the worst ends in the history of YouTube. My ends were really bad. So it's not like I'm in denial or I don't think my ends needed to be cut or that I didn't think the stylist did a great job. I think the stylist did an amazing job, but it doesn't change the fact that it's a lot of hair. Whether it was good hair, unhealthy hair, extremely unhealthy hair, it's still length that I no longer have on my head. And because the goal is booty crack length hair, I do miss my length, right? <laughs> like, I'm going to miss my length. When it comes to my wash day routine, I don't regret anything in my wash day routine. I don't think there's anything more I could have done to prevent my ends from being the way they were. I know a lot of people on the internet talk about me and my co-washing and my using protein on low porosity hair and my use of clay washes and my use of DIYs. Like there's, there's forums about me and my hair care routine. But I'm here to say that I don't think there's anything more I could have done with my actual hair regimen to prevent what had happened. Like, I do the most that I can. I wash my hair once a week, mostly. You know, I stick to a strict regimen. I incorporate protein, Ayurveda, hair oils, all this stuff. I do as best as I can, like bond builders, everything that I can to retain my length. So there's nothing I, I would change about my regimen per se, my regimen is still the same. I will link my detailed regimen and routine down below as I don't want this video to be too long going into things I've already talked about on my channel, but there's nothing I could have done, okay? I did the best I could with what I had. So just to clear the air there. Let's pause this video for a second and keep these bills paid. 
insert a sponsor for this video love me a sponsored queen shout out to lily silk for sponsoring this portion of the video i mean y'all let's be honest i am extra with my hair these are items that i use regardless if you don't know about lily silk lily silk offers a hundred percent silk pillowcases bed sheets duvet covers bonnets scrunchies so they sent me over a few items honestly i wanted these items anyway i have been not stalking but looking at lily silk for a while so when they hit up my inbox i was like hello it's me sure let's do this so i picked up well they sent me two pillowcases this one is already on my pillow this like i said is a hundred percent Silk. Oh, let's back up. Boom! <laughs> what I love about this pillowcase in particular is that it does have a zipper. So I just love the zipper feature. It just keeps my pillows in my pillowcase. And I love that for me, it protects my hair as much as possible. I did get all of my items in black just because y'all know I love oil. Y'all know I love butters, and when oil and butters meet light colored fabrics, y'all already know, it's giving jerry curl. So I got all of mine in black, and why I like using these type of fabrics, whether satin or silk, but talking about silk specifically in this video, is because it helps to retain moisture and length retention. Stop sleeping on cotton. Stop sleeping with those $3 bonnets from the beauty supply store and get you some quality hair protection. These are going to retain the moisture and length attention in your hair, like I said. Because this is pure silk and not a synthetic blend, your hair and your coils are not going to get caught up in the fabric. It's actually just going to glide nicely and beautifully across it and you're going to get that booty crack length hair. And who doesn't want that? That is always the goal. I'm probably most excited for these scrunchies. I use scrunchies a lot. I use them to make a puff. I'm not sure how much I can make a puff right now, but with my longer hair, I wore puffs all the time, and they were Tris cute, so I like these to make puffs. I also like these to band my hair at night when I'm wearing my hair out, and I wanna just keep my hair out of my face, but also keep it stretched without having to retwist at night, so I love having these as well. And because they're made of silk, my hair doesn't get caught in them, and it doesn't break my hair off. I do have fragile hair, so my hair can tend to break really easily, so I like having silk scrunchies or satin scrunchies it just makes it a lot easier for me and lily silk just has quality 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 silk items i want to save some coins because we always want to save some coins use the coupon code delsoul12 to save 12 percent off your next order with lily silk thank me later anyway enough long talking thank you lily silk once again for sponsoring this portion of the video now let's get back to our regular scheduled programming <laughs> honestly y'all in my curly state in my you know kinky curly kinky coily state i could not tell my ends were so bad when i would twist my hair up from my ends to my roots my roots to my ends my hair was full from the roots to the ends when I wore a twist out, my hair was nice and full. I didn't see raggedy ends, and that's what happens when you have curly hair. It really does hide the damage. I had no idea my ends were so bad. I know people commented on that video saying, well, I know your wash day is going to e be easy. I know you're not gonna have tangling. That was never an issue for me. I could not tell, honest to God, that my ends were so bad. My wash day is no, it's no simpler, it's no faster. If you haven't seen my video on my first wash day since my cut, you can check it out. That wash day was just as long and drawn out as my other wash days. I never had issues with my hair. My wash days are long because I want them to be long. I like to invest that time into finger detangling my hair. But I, there was no issues. I will say that the mistake that I made in my natural hair journey was being afraid of heat and blowing my hair out. I didn't do my first blowout since my 
the latest big chop in 2019 until 2021 until February 2021 so two years later I never blew my hair out I just kind of trimmed and dusted my hair in my twists or my braids but I didn't actually get that heat on my hair to see the ends and now that I've seen the beauty of heat styling your hair to see your ends I don't think I can ever go back to just cutting my hair in twists and braids. That's something I've sworn by. That's something I've told y'all to do or told y'all that's what I do. And I definitely changed my mind about that because my twists and my braids did not show me those see-through ends. They just did it. My ends just did not look like that when my hair was curly. It twisted on itself, it caught on itself, and it made itself look like beautiful juicy ends when they when they really needed to be cut and trimmed away and back to trimming my hair so i did my first blowout after two years post big chop but i didn't really do much to my ends at that point it wasn't until april of 2021 where i went in and did a trim and that trim i definitely should have taken off more I just assume that, oh, I didn't get my ends as straight, so if I get my ends straighter, then maybe they'll look better. But I think my ends were as good as they were gonna look. I just needed to take off the ends then. And people told me in the comments, like, you should take off more, and I was like, look, when my hair is curly, it's bomb. My ends are fine. In fact, my ends were not fine. And I am woman enough to admit that I was wrong. I am woman enough to admit that I was wrong. My ends needed to be trimmed more than I did last year in April. I have an entire video on it. You'll be seeing clips and stuff inserted here. Um, that trim wasn't enough. I should have probably taken off two inches then, and I didn't. So by the time we come around to January 2022, my hair had just kept splitting up more and more. The splits just kept working up my strands, which we talked about before on my channel. So I went from just needing probably two inches cut off to four inches, six inches, seven inches, whatever amount, a whole bunch of hair. So that's on me, like I said. And this cut is really on me because I'm gonna be honest with y'all, and this is my first time saying this on my channel, but I definitely noticed that I didn't retain as much length in 2021. So 2019 and 2020, my hair went from a big chop to down my back. Like my hair grew so long those first two years post big chop. My hair looked good, it felt good, it was full, it was beautiful. My hair was doing the damn thing. In 2021, I noticed like, bruh, why is my hair the same length that it was in 2020? Like, I couldn't see much of a difference. Now that I look at these videos and really analyze them, my hair was probably like an inch or two longer, but I didn't get the, that four to six inches that I was used to getting in 2019 and 2020. My first year after my big chop, I got seven inches of growth. My hair grew so much in that first year, and that was of course because my ends were nice and fresh, so I was able to retain as much length as possible. And in the second year, my hair built upon that growth from the year before. What my ratchet ends made me realize is that I was losing a lot of length from split ends, and I just was not retaining as much length. So I kind of plateaued because my ends were so bad. I didn't plateau because my hair growth cycle was actually slowing down. I was plateauing because my ends were trash and they needed to be cut. And that's just the honest to God truth. Now let's talk about the things that I plan to do moving forward. Because the goal is still booty crack length hair and I still want to have long hair, I still wanna grow my hair out long. My routine is still going to be the same. I'm still going to stick to my wash day routine. Again, it'll be linked down below if you are new here. I'm going to be doing the same things, not going to switch it up, going to stick to what I know. I will be trying to use up products. I'm still operation use up my stash. Not going to be buying a bunch. Like I said earlier, I'm going to continue to protect my hair. I'm going to make sure when I go to bed, I'm sleeping on my silk or my satin. But my silk, because I got my silk now. So I definitely will be sleeping on silk to protect my hair. I am going to learn to trust a stylist and trust my stylist, Yanni Styled It, who did this 
chop mini chop situation definitely going to trust her more I've never trusted stylists I've had bad experiences with stylists but this experience has shown me has shown me that it's important to find a stylist find someone you trust like she, along the way she was like okay I'm doing this I'm doing that let's do an initial cut see how you feel about it then we can then we can figure out if you want to cut more you don't have to cut more you can always come back like someone that's going to walk me through the process and hold my hand as we help my hair to retain as much length as possible. I've never had that before. She's super affordable. I will link her down below again. I definitely recommend anybody to get a stylist. I know it's hard. I know stylists can be mad expensive in the year of our Lord 2022. I know the accessibility to find a stylist is kind of hard too. I know it doesn't always come down to cough. I know sometimes it just comes down to a stylist just not being in people's area. Some of us live, live in more rural communities where we don't have access to things that other people have in look in larger cities and metropolitan so totally get that and I also know that the trust is in there just from bad experiences in our relaxed days or our you know pre natural days or whatever time frame I know we have iffy experiences with stylists but I'm encouraging you as a youtuber I know there's a fight between youtubers and stylists but as a youtuber I'm telling you get a professional trim if you are watching this video pause the video <laughs> and look for a professional stylist to get you a trim because you're, you're probably not gonna retain as much length if you're not getting your ends trimmed. If you don't trust a stylist, that's okay too. Just trim your hair and make sure you're trimming as much as possible. Don't trim just, oh, I don't wanna lose so much length. Trim it, it'll, it'll come back. She recommends every six to eight weeks. That's just OD for me because I don't manipulate my hair very much. I take really good care of my hair more than an average person so maybe somebody else will have to go every two months but I'm gonna try to go every three to four months but every time I go I'll I'll try to film it if I'm not being lazy and take you along the process I'm definitely going to stick to henna bond treatments and protein treatments that's something that I started doing consistently the last the lab the latter part of 2021 and I know these treatments work, but they don't work on raggedy ends. So I'm definitely going to continue to do them and see how much length I can retain for 2022. It's so weird that it's 2022. It's so easy for fine hair to break and snap off and split. So I wanna make sure I'm keeping my strengthening like at a top notch level. But that's it guys, talk to you later. Peace, thanks for watching, love you. <laughs>